Welcome back to Red Lodge Mini Moto Pros up next. A grid of over 20 riders. Young lady going off T3. It's Karis Jones. Karis, tell me what happened between the end of last season when you were running around in the mid pack and the beginning of this season at Landau where you were looking like a bit of a world beater. I know you crashed, but tell me what you've been doing during the winter. I've been practicing on the indoor circuit. I've just been trying to go faster and faster. And then. I've been, let's keep on practicing every weekend. And it's clearly worked because you had amazing pace, didn't you? Now, I know you crashed, but that's not the point. What did you learn from that meeting? I've learned that uh, I know I was as fast as everybody else, but I was just like getting excited because I was in second place at one point, and then I was just pushing a bit too much, and then I just ended up coming off. Okay, so I guess, that's a big learning curve for you. Um, what about this track here at uh, Red Lodge? Uh, you, you've been here before, I know, last year. How are you finding it so far? Well, it's a bit slippy, but I'm getting used to it a bit, and I do quite like this track now. Yeah. And, and what are you looking for this year, then? Um, you've got to be looking for podiums at least, but I think you can win, don't you? Well, I'll try, and hopefully, yeah. <laughs> The Cool Fab Mini Bike Championships on Downforce Radio. You get a pen and paper handy, I'll tell you a little bit more about tuning into Downforce Radio during this race. Well, the first attempt to get the Mini Moto Pro Race underway resulted in this incident the two WD 40 bikes coming together they get them going it would bring out a red flag on the restart now this incident going down is eddie o'shea and he takes down the 101 and louis rendell they both get up but again another red flag let's have a look at the grid positions with jake then before the third attempt to restart okay so ac40 pro for the third time of asking hitchcock and meller on the front row jones and o'shea on the second no louis rendell on row three alongside bailey stewart campbell with o'gorman and belford on the fourth 21 riders reduced to 20 and there's two onboard cameras one with karis jones and one with ollie walker starting in p11 this should be an interesting one off the start wait for it chaps i said wait for it that's bailey stewart campbell launching a little bit early and away we go straight into the lead goes ryan hitchcock beautiful getaway on board with karis jones that is Casey O'Gorman from P7 on the grid. O'Gorman has shot up into second. What a lightning start. Ollie Walker were on board with looking back to the nine-year-old Sean Abel. But Casey O'Gorman has got all the headlines here, bolting forward to second position as Taylor Lawrence just sat behind Sean Abel. is having an attack to try and make an early overtake. The young 12-year-old from Gloucester. Casey O'Gorman must have nitrous on the back of that bike. What a rocket start. There he is in front of us as we ride on board with Karis Jones. Down in fourth position, so Meller is in second position, tucked up behind Ryan Hitchcock, but it's Casey O'Gorman who is up to third. What a rocket! Karis Jones having a great run as well here in fourth place. Fantastic on board action. Josh Watley, say no, put your camera on. You can see the track conditions, see parts of the track still a little bit damp, Jake, but certainly getting drier. But there is still a little bit of drizzle in the air, so conditions are still changeable. Yep, fifth position at the moment behind the top four, Eddie O'Shea, the 1-1-4 one, one, bike still trying to close up on these guys. And up the inside, that is Ryan Hitchcock defending from Owen Meller, the 130. This is a really interesting squabble, but your race leader, Ryan Hitchcock, he is currently 16th in the points of the championship after a lacklustre weekend at Landau. What a way to bounce back, though. And Owen Meller is having a similar weekend here. Ninth, fifth, and sixth at Landau. Look, he's right up in second position, battling it out with Ryan Hitchcock. Talk about throw the form book out the window. It's absolutely amazing. Although I know Ryan was ill at the first round, but uh, you can't get over the fact that uh, he would have been very disappointed coming away from there, but very happy today. And by the way, we do like his new suit, Jake, with the large number 43 on the back. We like it a lot. Yeah, it looks proper convincing out there, and that's uh, a proper professional appearance. I have to say, this class is getting better and better when it comes to professional riders out there and the way that their bikes are presented. On board again with Karis Jones, trying to chase down Casey O'Gorman for third position. She learnt a lot from a very character-building weekend at Landau. Right here, though, at Red Lodge, she is in contention, not only for a podium, but for a race victory. A lot can happen in this class, and we have seen it time and time again. The leaders have gone down and the race has transformed in an instant. 
Now, those of you who are interested in the championship, now you may be an aunt or uncle, uh, a grandfather, grandmother who has children racing in the championship. Wherever you are in the world, look for Downforce Radio on Facebook. Search Downforce Radio. You can listen to every round of the championship this season live. The guys at Downforce Radio do a fantastic job. Tom Brooks is the commentator this weekend and the coverage has been fantastic. That's Bailey Stewart Campbell's information, six on track. Yeah, one of the great things, of course, about the Downforce Radio coverage is not only is every race live as it happens at the race weekends, but a lot of the riders seem to stumble out of the paddock and want their way into the commentary box to get a little bit of sneaky extra airtime. It's great. Some of the riders we've seen come out of the paddock, but uh, we've still got fantastic battling in this race. And once again, Owen Mellor tightens his grip on Ryan Hitchcock and look out boys on your six you've got the seven it's Casey O'Gorman chasing these boys down Owen Mellor needs to get on with this and get one over on Hitchcock otherwise he's going to get caught napping right that's Ollie Walker we're riding on board with looking back to Brody Crockford the 10 year old from Southampton in that very distinctive green and black machine and Brody Crockford is one another one of those riders who's getting faster and faster all the time last lap O'Gorman that is a brilliantly brave move into the first corner he is the new fast this lap holder now 53 6 a full six tenths of a second better than ryan hitchcock's managed and casey o'gorman might just have enough time to ride all the way from seventh on the grid to take the victory but he's having to defend at the moment from mella i think he's going to lose too much time yeah o'gorman doesn't have the word second in his vocabulary he will only be thinking of a win but has ryan just pulled out enough of a gap there He's uh, pulled a good four or five metres on Casey. It looks like it might be enough as they come through the top loop. But Casey getting closer, Jake. He really is. He's going to have an opportunity here. If there's just one little twitch from Ryan Hitchcock's bike, O'Gorman could seize his moment. Right, left, get on the throttle. Power to the line. Who's going to get there first? It's going to be Hitchcock, but only just. Casey O'Gorman races him right to the finish line. Yeah, couldn't have got it closer if he tried. And a little bit of a tumble over the line. That's Eddie O'Shea, a metre before crossing the line. Quick, Eddie, get over the line. He's lost three places in the time. It took him to push the bike over the line, but look at this finish. O'Gorman literally losing it by 0.095 of a second. What a comeback from Ryan Hitchcock after a miserable weekend by his standings at Flandau. He comes back for a fantastic win. Meanwhile, Eddie Eddie O'Shea O'Shea goes for a tumble and a half, a metre from the line. His chain's got caught up. You can just see his chain's off, and I think it's got caught up in the rear wheel. And that has uh, seen him come off the and bike. And there's a race still going on. Get over the line, Eddie. Quick, quick, quick. He has to now shove he's it. just got the seventh, Jake. He just pushed it across <laughs> the line. Again, just, by 0.09 of a second. It couldn't be any closer if you called it. Ryan Hitchcock then taking the win by a matter of millimetres from Casey O'Gorman. One more lap, and I think it would have been a very different result. Owen Mellor, Karis Jones and Bailey Stewart Campbell round out the top five. But what an absolutely fantastic second round of the championship. And with Casey O'Gorman getting on the top step of the podium later in the weekend he now leads the championship by just 10 to Owen Meller. Bailey Stewart Campbell is third from Vince Martin Karis Jones it's game on if you ever wondered what an F1 sidecar proper one not the little ones that we race in the mini bikes championships the one from BSB the British champions would look like and sound like on a car track this is it I caught up with the two lads earlier Guys, you've just been out on the track in very difficult conditions in a very powerful machine. How was that? Yeah, very tricky. Very tricky indeed, but fun. I think for us, it's uh, yeah, it's too tight and twisty. You can't even get a second gear, really. So it's just sort of you know, spinning it sideways and making it look a bit spectacular. But actually, you sort of, I reckon we didn't even hit 60 mile an hour out there. You know, we're, sort of, we're struggling on this big old girl. And how did you guys get into this? I'm assuming you were racing single motorcycles, were you, at one time, and you decided to get into uh, into uh, sidecars? Uh, I used to start off on singles, yeah, on, on solos, uh, racing motorbikes when I was 15. And then um, I met uh, Ryan from my brother who was passengering, doing uh, sidecars, and Ryan was doing sidecars. I met him through that, and then I fancied a little turn at sidecars myself and uh, rung him up and said, come on, on the back, please. <laughs> and it escaped from there. Okay, and uh, Ryan, what have you made of the meeting? Uh, you've been around the uh, paddock this weekend. First time here at the Cool Fab Racing Series. What have you made it, made of it so far? Yeah, I think it's been really good. It's uh, 
It's a really good meeting, it's really professional, you know, it's, it's great that some superbike teams are starting to take interest in some of the younger kids, you know, some of these kids out there that are really talented and they've got some good speed and, you know, they're going to Spain and doing this, you know, they're perhaps next Moto3, Moto2 champions, so, yeah, you know, it's been, it's been a really good kind of eye-opener for us. We want more side cars to get involved and, you know, hence why we're here and we're doing a bit of a demonstration and that's what it's all about, really. My absolute favourite of all the machines, the F1 sidecar's gone underway with 10 registered, 8 entered and 6 actually taking the race. Although two riders decided to try and make it 4 in the early stages as Messrs Stainer and Oscar got a little bit too close for comfort. But once that first lap started to settle down, Paul Qualters held the early advantage on the big girl racing machine, although he was trying his best to hold it on the road. It was difficult because he had pressure from Mick Williams on the 26, riding the Team Williams machine, and that was the only invitation they needed to storm up the inside and take the advantage. From there, it was theirs going away. No matter what ball quarters could throw at the Mick Williams machine, it was always going to be 26 in front of 126, although you couldn't really tell based on the numbers on the sidecars. Gents, make sure the right numbers are on the bikes in future. Makes our lives 10 times easier. Meanwhile, though, Williams was storming away at the rate of a few tenths of a second per lap, eventually opening out a best lap of 38-1 compared to Qualters on a 39-9. Absolutely incredible pace. No matter what Paul Qualters could throw at him, Mick Williams got into a canter and rode away for the first of three straight victories over the course of the Red Lodge weekend. And it was proof that only one pair of riders could dominate on the Suffolk circuit of Red Lodge. The boys on the blue. Team Williams. Further back, there was a good little battle between Adrian Ems on the 76 and Danny Stainer on the 17, eventually to be won in the second race by Stainer, but in race one, it was Ems who managed to finish ahead. Williams from BQJ and Ems is the way it finished, and there's more action where that came from after the break.